Hi, I'm Adam Robert Lewis, and you're listening to Brewing Actors Podcast. My chance to talk to actors, to hear their stories, what inspired their performances, and what decisions or relationships influence their work. On today's episode, I made a conscious decision to maybe not do some things because I, I want to show that as we collectively are more than just this. You know, we don't just sing and, and dance. We, you know, we, we yeah. can adapt to other areas because it is, no matter what, it is entertainment. My guest today is Jodie Prenger. Jodie shot to fame during I Do Anything, a program in search of Nancy for the London revival of Oliver. Jodie was chosen by the voting public, making her West End dream a reality. Since I Do Anything, Jodie has continually reinforced that she really can do anything. From musicals to plays to TV, Jodie has conquered all the mediums. Today, Jodie is currently returning to the National Theatre in their production of A Taste of Honey. I caught up with Jodie at the Trafalgar Studios in London. So, like any story, we have to start at the very beginning. This is episode three of Brewing Actors Podcast. Hello, I'm Jodie Christine Prender, that's even my middle name there. Um, I was born in a little town uh, where you can have lots of fish and chips and a donkey ride for 50p called Blackpool, where well, you could then, you can't now. Um, yeah, I, I, I grew up there um, for many years. I mean, being a 21 year old now, it's, you know, just yesterday, but <laughs> the, uh, the uh, it was it was a brilliant town and it was, do you know what? I stand by it was a brilliant town for being a hub of entertainment yeah. and I, 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 well, I don't think I know that's what got me kind of into the love of kind of, well, live entertainment in general. Was that and something you saw a lot on the weekends? Was it something, did it you was, go into Blackpool? It, it, I, gosh, I, I remember them seeing them queuing up for the summer seasons of right. the Brian Connollys, the Ross Abbotts and the Shirley Bassies and they'd queue, you know, for, for hours just to go yeah. see these stars on the piers, whether it be in the, the Winter Garden Theatre or the Grand Theatre, it was it was a brilliant hub. And there was always entertainment going in on all the hotels. Mm. And I grew up in a hotel, that's not my parents put me and we all lived there together. Uh, and we did have a house, but I'm saying that we, we used to have acts come in. And I remember the first act I ever watched was a drag queen by the name of Jackie Lester. And I can I can still see now him singing my boy lollipop, and I was like, this is amazing. I want to be a drag queen. I've come close, <laughs> but the um, I just think it was all that. It was all that kind of excitement and. Right. and so you got the bug at a young age, you'd say. Yeah. yeah did you definitely. do drama at school? Was it something that you did? It, well, uh, no. Big, well, yes, we did, but I went to a girls' school. So all the roles I played, thanks to being a chubba wubba, I played a lot of male roles. Right. So from everything from Gilbert and Sullivan to um, to playing Phantom, actually I played. Really? You, yeah, I played your part in there and uh, done it. Or in the school production. Andrew, just so you know, if Adam <laughs> wants a night off, she's there. Yeah, and we did it like oh, it was so funny. We did this course at a girls' school. We had this like big fashion show. Right. We did it all connected to the musicals. So I literally went from being, mass, you know, like a Tenardier to Phantom and everything. But What were you like with other sort of classes at school? Uh, I was always the one. Were you academic? Yeah, could be. Right. Yeah, got all A stars. Right. People are shocked. Don't, yeah, pick up your chin there. No, and because uh, I, I wasn't. I was was totally, you not? No, not at all. I understand French. Yeah, I, I it, think it all passed me by. And my parents why? were really, I just... I just was, I, I was just a bit thick. I just couldn't, I didn't know what is, they were it, on about. It, I don't think it's necessarily, maybe not. call yourself thick. Is it applying, you didn't want to apply yourself to it? Maybe not, but I just didn't have a clue what they were on about at all. I just didn't get it. Where did you go to school? Japan? Uh, no, no, I went to a Welsh school, but I think actually 
I just I just wasn't I think going to a Welsh school actually is very difficult if you aren't very academic because you have double the subjects you've got to do oh, Welsh you've got to do English you've got oh to yeah do, of, course, of course and then obviously you're learning all the subjects in Welsh right and I just found it very very difficult so I, my parents were like we just don't know what you're going to do but I just didn't have a clue I'd just be in my own thoughts in the class and then they'd be like right uh, madam what is some you know algebra or da 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 or um, square root or something I just didn't have a clue you're too busy like, were you singing? I was too busy Dreaming about something else. Movies. Did they or... have like drama at your school? Was it kind of? Yeah, they did a lot of drama. Did they? Obviously, a lot of Eisteddfods, which is sort of like Welsh competitions. But I, I just didn't have the. I don't know. I didn't have the confidence, so I didn't oh, do really? any drama in school did at all. Did you not? Nothing. I would be the last person to get up. Did and you sing. want to? But you just didn't feel you had. You I think have so. Any... I just didn't know how you go how how to go about it. So I'm always interested in whether you know. If you were academic, were you sort of, you know, swayed to maybe go in a different direction? No, I think it was, the, do you know, it was a great, it was a great school. Um, it closed, like my um, college did as well. I don't know what it says about me. Um, and it always seems to be after I left. So the, um, it, we were always kind of really supported and we were supported through maths and biology and stuff like that. But I just didn't have the inclination for it at all right and to be honest i didn't really have the inclination for for anything i loved english loved it loved art um i actually wanted to go be an animator for disney right but my brother's got the oh he's the most amazing artist so i had all these kind of things but just didn't there wasn't a lot of um how can i put it there wasn't a lot of source for me to kind of go and do drama or go right. this and i actually the first ever audition i did which half the girls re i got really bullied for actually after this because they fell out of me because i got in and she didn't which is horrible was this while you were at primary or secondary no this is when we we're at, um senior school right seniors and we i auditioned for the national youth theater right and we had speech and drama with miss preston hilarious lady and uh, I got in, and then I actually remember going there, and we we uh, we rehearsed at Tufnell Park. I was like, oh, finally, there's other people like me, and right. it was like it was like going into Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. Just like, yes, my people. Right. And it's a weird feeling of going, yes, there's you somewhere. You found your crowd. Yeah, they just got it. I yeah. could be myself, and you could kind of you know let your guard down almost, and then just kind of. Yeah, I just felt, well, I was going to say normal. I've never been normal, but I just felt like, yeah, this is definitely, I know what I know what I want to do now. This so what there. was that? The What production did you do with them? There was some sort of time machines. I can't remember the name of it. It was 1946. Um, was it like a summer course? They, no, they did like productions every year, so they did right. the same thing. I didn't do the national, uh, the musical theatre, the... NYMT, but I did the the National Theatre. I, I actually really enjoyed Shakespeare when we were doing the um, uh, my speech and drama. So I just loved doing all that side of it, really. And how old were you then? Uh, gosh, I must have been 16, 16. 17. So did you plan to go to drama school or did you plan to go to a... It, it was weird. I went to do a BTEC course. Right. Um, it, in Blackpool? In oh, so... Further out and right. kind of... I say Blackpool, but St. Tans, and it was great. Do you know, they, they did quite... Um, it was a really good course, but I just didn't... I was too scared to leave home. It's right. a bit like you. It's that kind of fear of... Yeah. I don't know. I, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, and there wasn't a great kind of... There wasn't a lot of information to kind of push kids in that mm. way. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I just didn't really want to leave home. W were your parents pushing you to go down that avenue? No, dead supportive. Right, very and supportive. Did, yeah, and really supportive. Whatever you wanted to do, they would back you. Yeah, and, and I think that's right. what you do. That's what you need more than anything. Yeah. You what well, about your parents? No, they were supportive. I think they were actually <laughs> just no, they no, they were supportive. I think they were disappointed, or my grandparents were Why? disappointed that I Why? didn't want to do drama. They paid for oh. me to go to stagecoach. Oh and then really? I, yeah, my mother said we're not paying for you anymore because you just you're just not interested. And there's, you know, uh, you just, you know, yeah. So I, I just, it took me a while to convince myself, I think, that I, this is what I really wanted to do. So I became Why? a graphic Why designer. Do you think that is? I just really didn't have the confidence. I really did. 
I had the confidence in my bedroom yeah. to put me in front of people and it would just I dwindle. Just, I'm not, I don't want to know about your sex no, life, no. love. <laughs> I don't want to know about any of that. We're here but, to discuss that. Yeah, but no, it was. I was very good. Very good in the in, in the shower. <laughs> the I just, was wonderful. But I just wasn't very good in Did front of anybody. Did you have friends that were involved in a the theatre or...? No. No, I okay. didn't really. So I, was it the people that you hung around with you didn't feel like you could say, I'm just going to nip off and go Not dance really, lesson. no. Oh, they were very sport-orientated and I was just... I did. I tried rugby, I tried football, I tried all sorts of things, skateboarding. Yeah. I just want... I tried to fit in because that... A lot of the boys that I used to bother with just weren't really interested in theatre. But my granddad was a, a musical director and sang at the Male Voice Choir. So I was like a groupie, so I just went around with him. Yeah. So I spent more time with aunties, uncles, um, who all loved Mm theatre. You know, Michael Ball at the time. So I was always listening to those records and albums. I don't worry, me and my granddad went to all the (laughs) conventions. Right. So (laughs) then I, but I don't know, I just, I got to about 23, 24, and I thought, this really is not what I want to do anymore. Really? And I did was some this amateur. A, was this when you were doing the graphic design? Yeah, yeah. I did some amateur dramatics, and somebody said, "Oh, you should do this as a career." Yeah. And I thought, well, how do you even go about doing that? What did you do? What did you? I did just you... I travelled to London every day, every Saturday. Yeah. For singing lessons, I did that for about two years. Tried to get an agent, couldn't get an agent, and then somebody said, "You know what? Maybe just try an audition for drama school." Mm-hmm. And I did. I got in. I got an agent, and then. I, I got my. Did you get your show. agent at the like they do the big yeah, show, the show places? Well, yeah, I I no, I didn't get an agent at all, and there was a director I'd work with who said, "Have you got any interest?" I said, "No, absolutely not." And it's like a cattle market, and it, 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 it I, I'm, I'm not. It's horrible. It is the things I've heard. It oh, definitely it is, is horrible. It, it must be the most petrifying thing to step on that stage. You just fresh out of college mm. and then go, "I'm in." I'm in a room with a sea of people who could yeah. decide my future. Yeah. It, I think it's the most daunting it's thing tough. for anyone to do You walk out that. into the little bar area where there's all this finger food and everybody's getting a drink. And I bet like, you couldn't eat a thing, could you? No, I was like, nervous. here it is, right. And they're going to be cooing up. <laughs> and not one single person approached me. And there's that sort of awkward look of like, ha, ha, hi, well done. And that was it. And I left thinking... Yeah, but then you look at that Phoebe, you know, the the Fleabag girl. When she did the... There was a brilliant article that kind of so kind of shone this fact out that she was pictured there with like a a terrible review for Edinburgh Fringe. Yeah, in the Fringe. And then her sat with all the BAFTAs. I think it's having that... I think in this industry more than anything, it's having that belief and that strength just to get through to the next day because it's tough and don't... Let anybody else tell you tell you any different from the people at the tippity top to the to everyone who works and that's technicians, crew, you know, musicians. It it is a hard industry, but it's mm. great when it's great. Yeah, it? absolutely. So to go back to yeah. um, the dra- I do skip a the lot. Don't worry, no, you'll have, that's all right. You'll have to keep me on the track. drama. Uh, the drama school. So you did the B Tech. Yeah, um, but then I did used to. I used to. <laughs> I used to have a pink jeep at the time. I mean, Adam, who has a pink jeep with a white with a white roof. <laughs> who did I think I was? With on the back, it had I had an I had it airbrushed when we were in Florida. Of course, I did. Um, a picture of a pink rhino, a pink rhino, and I was called the Pink Lady. Oh. <laughs> and there's people still at home go. You used to have that pink jeep, and I go, yes, yes, I did. How treacherous is that? But yeah, I I used to. Is it Skype? I did use the Skype a lot. Oh, yeah. I was just very... I used to love that, you know, when you get up in the morning and you get your schedule through for the week. I used to enjoy, I shouldn't really say this, but I used to be like, right, well, I'm not going to that class. Did and you? I, we used to text and the boys used to go, we've got a free day. <laughs> we've got a free it's day. It's bad that there was a, there's a lady and I bumped into her, one of her teachers, Angela. And I used to... I used, to, I used to be so cocky. I used to wave at her as I was leaving. But in a nice way. Right. Be back in a minute, Angela. So did you always attend the drama classes or were you skiving those a little no, bit? No, I did. I, 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 no, I did. I did. I, yes, I did. I did I did attend them and I did really enjoy them. And um... So what was the advice from the sort of teaching staff? Were they saying <laughs> this is something you should be doing? Yeah, there was there was one that wanted to try and get me to be an opera singer. I thought, oh, I can't be bothered with that. No offence. Um, yeah, it was just kind of just to pursue it. But then it was almost still then. 
I, I, I still didn't really know what I wanted, what you to, wanted do. to do. I went to my dad, God love my dad, used to take me to London for all these auditions. Right. And then bizarrely, I got an agent, you know, uh, called Trends, who sent me to all these auditions. But some of them, I'd walk in, I was like, guys, um, I don't think we're singing on the same hymn page here. Right. They'd be all there, you know, like six foot kind of stick thin, you know, kicking the legs behind their earlobes and I'm right. just, you know, cracking my knuckles going, mm-hmm. I'm going to go for this. Mm-hmm. So it's all that kind of, but I still kept going. And I think through right. every audition you learn, every experience you learn, everything you do in this mm. industry. So you learn. kind of went straight into the sort of auditioning stage yes. of the industry. So yeah. you sort of bypassed maybe going to a traditional London drama school and went yes, straight into doing auditions. The BTEC course. Right. I, I actually... I did the BTEC course and then I did, then they just started a new musical theatre course. Right. It's like, brilliant, Perfect. brilliant. I started on that um, and it was one of those that a lot of the people from our previous years where we studied, they kind of, they'd left and they didn't go on to this theatre and it was like people from everywhere and I got bullied. Right. In a really, in a real, I'm laughing here but it wasn't. Why were, you, why were you bullied? Uh, because because I was given the main roles. Right. Um, and um, things like my mic was turned off. And I had one girl with a fist in my face. And I was like, whoa, this is not this is not for me. Mm. It's just I, I don't feel like that against other people. I don't I don't entice other right. people to have that you reaction. You celebrate other people's victories. Of course you do. Yeah, of course. If they're nice, I'll, I'll yeah, skip yeah. around the room. Yeah. If they're not, I'll slap them across the face and tell them to bugger <laughs> off. That's me, do you know right. what I mean? But, um, yeah, I found that really hard. And I couldn't, from having two great years at BTEC course and having so much fun, I found that really hard to go into a space where I didn't feel safe. And right. then I did carry on doing my auditions and I did all the, the Blackpool circuit and a lot of the kind of the the gay bars across the, across the country. I, I travelled quite a bit and just really loved that because I was singing songs from the show. And I, I mm. know I've told this story. In Are they a tough crowd? Oh, well, I always tell this story. The first one, I remember my dad loading all the gear into this Manchester Workingmen's Club. And there was like about, they, honestly, they were there at the front row, you know, getting the tinfoil sandwiches out. And um, no, they don't eat tinfoil sandwiches. I mean, the sandwiches are actually tinfoil. tinfoil. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And I went, hello, everybody. My name is Jodie Moore. That was my old stage name. Right, Because they always Moore. say Moore. Right. Because actually it was Michael Barrymore who gave me a bit of a break. That's right. another story. And uh, how long have you got? Five well, years. Well, no, no. See no, yourself no. down, Adam. <laughs> we're, we're in for a bumpy ride. And... Um, I looked out and went, does anyone like songs from the shows? Mm, and they kind of like, and they, and they all went, no. And I went, this is, don't cry for me, Argentina. <laughs> and I still did it. I think Defiant, I defiant. Yeah. I think I am defiant. Because a, a few people and uh, uh, memoirs or biographies I've read about people have sort of done that circuit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it hardens you in terms of, of it does. giving you... Um, I don't know, thick skin, I guess, yeah. in terms of being able to withstand a really tough audience. Yeah. And sometimes audiences change. You get a good audience, you get a, you know, you get a bad audience. So what was the what was the next step for you in terms of the break? Was it <laughs> the, the well, Barrymore program or was it? Well, the... yeah, I suppose it was. No, I think it was the. I did. There was a a little clip in the local gazette saying, "Do you want to go to New York?" And I thought, oh, "I'm going to go to New York. I want to see these shows." to apply for a travel show in Granada, and we got it, and I got to go with my mum, and I saw Bernadette Peters and Anna Get You Gone. So right. Like so it. when you say you applied, was it just a case oh, of you, fill you out a form, fill out a form, send it? Yeah, and they come in the interview, and if they like you, right. they'll, they'll, they'll say, come on, I'll take you to New York, right. which was amazing. So you got it. So what So what was the trip? Just, just, to, big, just video you. Going you around New York. Going to New York. And Sounds we went great. to the, at the top of the... Uh, uh, Empire State Building to ourselves and it was fantastic and then it was from that that some of the researchers just like me and then they said would you want to come on Dale Winton's the other half and and then because they some of the researchers and that like me there they said do you want to come and do be like the actress for the first ever Saturday Night Takeaway so I was on that and I right so I did all of it, it, it's all so it was kind of, of like a snowball effect yeah after it that. was yeah it was really right. and I think I, still at the time I was still auditioning and I always remember, always remember that I went up for Tracy Turnblad 
and it was the first time it was coming over here. Right. Um, when it went to the West End, Shaftesbury have the Sha- yeah, There was one time it came in before, and then it got cancelled, and then I right. think it came back with Leanne about right. another couple of years after okay. that. So it got right the way down, and I always remember David Grimnod coming out and just going, not this time, sweetheart. And he was so... I will never be able to thank that man enough for being so so lovely to me. Right. And he really was. And you kind of... You know, I've been in a lot of auditions where they just didn't have that time for you or... They didn't, you know, want to kind of even, you know, shake your hand sometimes. Mm, mm. So to have that, um, it really won my heart. But it broke, it broke it as well. Mm. So yeah, so that. Were was you it. good at auditioning back then? Um, probably not. And I'm, I'm, I, I openly admit I am really bad at auditions now. Right. I, Still. Oh, I can't stand them. Right. Can't stand them. Absolutely petrified. It's that pressure of that three minutes. Yeah. That you have to have with them. Yeah. And I can go into I can go into a rehearsal room and do it off the bat. I'm, yeah, I'm exactly the it's same. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah, I yeah, and I've I've always got this rehearsed speech about I'm really good in the rehearsal room. <laughs> I'm not so good in the audition, but please, I'll be amazing. Oh, well, I'll be so. Bad, I'll try it. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I am not gonna say who I was in for, but it was a very reputable company. I was just I was I got the verbal diary. I was like. Guys, I don't know why I'm just really bad at auditions. I'm so sorry. I was just telling them, going, listen, don't hire me on this one because I heard just what came out of my mouth and I wouldn't hire me. And I just started going like this, going, why are you saying that? What were I they just, like? Were they, they laughing? Were laughing. Right. They were laughing. I said, look, I'm just being really honest. Yeah. And there was um, another audition that I got asked to come in for and the lady who wrote it said she wanted me to come in to play this part. I'm like, brilliant, she must, you know, have a vision. Can you do this this accent? Can you do a Birmingham accent? I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah, of course I can. No, no worry at all. Well, I literally, um, I went in, I went to uh, Skegness. I took a trip around to uh, your neck of the woods, Wales. I think it's a part of it in Japanese. And then I ended up somewhere in Liverpool, but it definitely wasn't anywhere near Birmingham. Right. So I, I really don't, I can't do auditions. Mm. I'm surprised I get stuff when I have been in an audition. Yeah. It's weird. So, I suppose, the Nancy programme. Yeah. When you say you don't like auditioning, that has to be one of the worst audition process in terms of there are thousands of people auditioning. Yeah, true. It's it's videoed and broadcast to a million Uh, people. Like, I literally, it's just, I could never do that. I would just... You, I mean, but the weird thing is, and this is what I say, my nan always says, if it's meant for you, it will not pass you by. I, I do believe that. I think there was... Um, well, actually, on the when we went back into audition, guess who was on the audition panel, which was David Grinrod. Right. And I remember going, prepared the whole speech, going, right, just Jodie, stay calm, stay calm. What are you singing? I'm going to sing... Um, uh, I'm going to sing Anastasia... Um, heart, don't you know the heart, the one from the animation? Heart, don't fail me, me now. now. Yeah. But don't start it in a key that's going to end up making cats cry. <laughs> so I knew where I was going with it, and I could right. feel my heart Go like on. going, my hands sweating, going. I can't sing that high. Can't sing that high. And then I just said, "Guys, I'm so sorry. Can I start again?" And then I sang, uh, "Don't rain in my parade." So even in that audition, I totally messed up. Right. And I got it. So it's just that thing of getting through that door. Yeah. And even when we did the like the the like the live audition in front of people, I look back and I cringe and I go, Oh Jodie, why did you take your shoes off? Why didn't you take that? I had a five pound sticker in my shoes and I just got sometimes I wanna shake myself and just mm. go But then if I did it I just wouldn't I'd stop being me. And I think that's what yeah. you know. Were you struggling to get before the Nancy program? Mm-hmm. Were you at a crossroads in terms of struggling to get work or weren't getting the work that you wanted to get? It, it, it was really weird, wasn't it? I, was, I went to do... I, I worked an awful lot in, in loads of gay bars and right. I was doing really well with that. I'm really enjoying it. And then I went to work for Disney on the cruise ships right. and I did the shows for them on there. And they were like... that. I suppose, in a way, was my first real taste of 
because they had their own show, This Ghost Ship, which is a brilliant and beautiful music. Right. And they had Disney Dreams and they, we did Hercules. Right. So for me, that was my first step into... Of a show set up of... Totally full on show. Yeah. Right. So that was good fun. So I suppose I didn't find it hard to work. I, I always worked. Right. But I always wanted to, you know, be on the West End stage. Right. And play a, a role, a and character. Play a, role. play a female role. Uh, I mean, yeah. anything from school. I just want to play a female. So when they announced the first set of uh, programme, well, the first programme they did, which was to find a Maria. A Maria, yeah. Did you apply for that? No. No, you didn't think, no. <laughs> Could you imagine? Well, I don't know. I don't the hills are alive <laughs> with the sound of music. <laughs> but were you, that did you think that that was something, if... If they were auditioning for a role that would suit you, you would have. I don't know. I never got it. Joseph. I'm always really shocked at that. I <laughs> thought I was perfect for that role. <laughs> so they did Maria, Joseph, Nancy, right? Sorry. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that is that. So... That is brilliant. <laughs> So they... even, your, even the iPad's like, sorry, <laughs> sorry, did you just say you auditioned for Joseph? Whoa. whoa. Um, yeah, they did Maria Joseph, Nancy, Dorothy and Jesus. Right. Which I think I've actually, I've, I think I've got a chicken named after everyone else. Got <laughs> oh no, Joseph died. Sorry. Right. <laughs> sorry. So you decided to audition once they announced that they were looking for a Nancy. Yeah. You thought this is this mom, is my yeah, moment. Yeah, my mum heard it on my mum heard it on radio. I think it could have been the Graham Norton show actually, and and then that's when I applied through that. I, right. It's just a it's a show I've always loved. I mean, I'm used to mine to Shirley Bassey's as long as he needs me, and I just yeah, it's just something I'd I'd loved and just wanted to be part of. Mm. What was that process like? Scary, exciting, um, quite unnerving to it. And it's like that, like what you said, it's like having that belief in yourself. I didn't, I don't, I still don't think to a certain extent I have it today. And I think that's what keeps you striving to better mm. yourself in, in different areas. But I just think it's like that. I didn't believe that. Why would they want, why would they want would they me? Want or why would they want my voice? Or why would they want, I, I just, mm. and then it was so lovely and, and very honouring to be kind of welcomed into that yeah. home or that family that I'd always wanted to be part mm. of. Was, it's a, it was a long process, right? From the yeah, initial was, audition. Yeah, it was a really long process from the, the audition itself, then, of course, going to the the live shows, the 12 So weeks. the audition, the initial audition, is that filmed or is that just a, a, a case of... I think they did film it, right. but they didn't necessarily... I think they showed clips of it, if I can remember, throughout the show, but it wasn't necessarily aired right. as a separate entity, yeah. kind of yeah. thing. So you got you got through to the live... The live shows. Shows. I what? always remember... Oh, I, have to tell, I always remember there was there was a point... So there was... We were at Andrew's house, and it was he was telling all the girls who made the top... You know the top right. twelve. To was this to, to get show. into this is this to is boot this is boot camp now? Is this it? is this is technically after boot camp, right? And it's we're finding out from the eighteen who's going to go into the live shows. Right. So we're we're taken into a room one at a time, and <laughs> and it obviously it was like a it was almost like a it was like a mini library kind of just to give you an idea of what right. the room was like, and then Andrew was stood there. He's like, Jodie. I was like, yes, Andrew. <laughs> He's like, the part of Nancy is very emotional. Yes, Andrew. And it was going like that. I was like, oh, what's he going to say? He's going to say. He's like, I'm, and you, you're going through so many um, things that are whizzing through your head. He's saying this because he wants to let me down and say it's going to be emotional for you and you're going to have to go home. And it's 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 all negative, negative, mm, negative. Mm. Not like, oh, I've got this, yeah, got this. Yeah. I was like, he's, he's just trying to let me down lightly. Trying to let me down lightly. And when he said... We, I think we want to be in your live shows. I was like, no. And then I just, again, lost it a bit. And then as I was losing it, I didn't really know where I was going. But behind one of the doors was Cameron and Madeline, his wife, hiding, listening in. Right. And I went to go into the door, like, wrong door, wrong door. Like, oh, God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So it was always that kind of, it's always been a whirlwind. Right. And I hate that word. Same with mm. roller coaster. But it has always been that. Which I think, in a weird way, has made it more fun. Mm. Was the Nancy program your sort of chance to cement more training? 
Did, was it very yeah. nurturing as you went along? Oh, br- the BBC are brilliant for that. They right. are so nurturing and we were So did you have singing lessons, yeah, acting yeah, lessons? Yeah, uh, we're, we're Claire Moore and Donna. Um, we had singing lessons. We had, Ke- what's Ke- um, Kevin? Um, we, yeah, we had it all. Because you've got to think of it, we were putting on full-on productions yeah. on a weekly basis. Mm. So that was the group numbers, our individual numbers, sometimes two. Right. Uh, so, yeah, so there was a lot of training throughout the whole kind of, mm. kind of show. What about training in terms of dealing with the the press attention? You hadn't yeah. really had you you hadn't really had that amount of attention before. No, no. So it's quite new to you at that point. It was weird. It's that thing of going, oh, why did they want a picture of me? I still say that today. Right. Um, but yeah, the pr- the press thing was bizarre. But in the in them in them days, in nineteen twenty six, <laughs> there wasn't Twitter or yeah. Facebook, yeah. and there wasn't any of that. I think it was MySpace. There wasn't there wasn't Instagram mm. or Instagram, mm. whatever you want to call it. And I think that was a good thing because right. you weren't constantly feeding into Consumed that. by it. You enjoyed yeah. the yeah. experience yeah. rather be going rather yeah. than going. What are people saying or, or what was yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you get to the final. Yeah. Did you believe? No. That... <laughs> no. Totally did that. Prepare your face, Jodie. Yeah. Prepare the face for disappointment. So, because yeah. I've rewatched the sort of your highlights. Have you? Uh, and, oh no. Um, because I, I can remember watching it. I watched them all, oh, I think. No way. Uh, and uh, we voted for you. So it, it was, uh, I was, you know, you Actually, felt very much part of Actually, you can't say this on podcast. It. He's going, no, I didn't. He's no. just <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, g- oh. Genuinely. Um, and, you know, people, the headlines at the time uh, were the people's Nancy. And I guess... Um, oh, sorry. This is, this is live. Come in. Hey, Hiya, thank Hi. you. Thank you, we've actually got sound. <laughs> Thank you. Say hi, Herbie. Hey, Hiya. Hi, <laughs> um, but that that final lineup, and it's something that was, you know, when they go, who do you believe is your Nancy? Yeah. And you're both standing there in the final. I, uh, it's gut-wrenching. Hot, to, but, but were you just like, that's part of the process, I'm okay with in it? In a weird way. I mean, I, I think I always accepted it. I, and this sounds silly, I was just... I was just so bloody happy to be there. Right. That sounds silly. I really was just... I, do you know what? If I literally had walked out of that building and never stepped on a stage ever again, I feel like I've actually had a snippet of the little dream that I've always dreamt of. Right. I know that sounds really corny, but mm. I really felt that way. I thought, oh, I've just done it. I've sung, I've sung in front of Andrew and Cameron and I've, I've, I've just made... a. I, from Lu- and Blackpool is a small town, even though it is a hub of entertainment. But I tried so hard and travelled so much to London just to have that experience. That West End experience. I would, I would have gone away and gone. Do you know what? I'll die happy. Right. It's just having that, and I'm, and it's having, you know, that just that kind of oh, that little oh, they did believe in me. And I yeah. know that sounds really silly, but it's just, it's just lovely to have that, and I'm, I will mm. always cherish that. Always will. So what what happened when you got it? You know, you. And that get... night, they, when, when I found out, I can't remember half of that night. Right. I think I went into some sort of weird... People said, do you remember doing that? I was like, I actually don't remember. Right. I, I think I went into genuine, honest shock. And that right. is honest to God truth. So you had a few period, like, the, the show finishes. Yeah. And then you don't start rehearsals till, what, three or four months later? And then I went into, oh, the Le Miz And then the, Le, then the Le Miz. So whose idea was that? Was that Cameron's idea to just... Cameron's idea went to do a, a course, uh, a summer course at RADA. Right. Loved that because it was Shakespeare. Um, and then I went to do four weeks in the West End. And I think that was to get me to, you know, into the routine of... Yeah. It is tough, isn't it? An eight show week. Yeah, it is hard. Adjusting your body to the yeah, time, right? Yeah. Come on, let's get up. You know, get a bit of slap on. What was that like, though? You've just won a massive, not a competition, but uh, you know, a, um, a show to play one of the most iconic female roles yeah. in a musical, and now you're going to be joining a, a company as an ensemble member, right? Don't bother me that. Do you know what I mean? It, that doesn't, and it still doesn't bother me right. today. Doesn't even right. bother me. But they were all very supportive. Oh, the they, they were. They were lovely. Right. Like really, honestly. Because you're now a a, a, a big name. I can you're say now a, I've got a, big, I've got a big heart. No, no, I but you're say. now a, a big name. Oh you know, no! You see, are, I, don't, but... I don't, I don't, I don't. See, I'm. 
I, I don't. It's not that I don't like it. I am honoured when people say that. Yeah. I am very proud to say I've worked. Mm. But I just love. I love companies. Right. I love all singing off the same hymn. You shit. enjoy leading the company. I just enjoy the family of, and, and right. I think that I think that's what Les Mis really taught me. It taught me it was a family. I was scared. I thought, oh, they're never gonna. They're never gonna welcome me. Yeah. I'm just gonna go in. I'm gonna be like, oh, here she is. Yeah, she is. Who does she, yeah, she think yeah, she is? Yeah. I thought, and it was never. It was never like that. Right. It was really. It was really lovely. It was, so like, you, the, it was like the bloody Waltons. You know, it was lovely. <laughs> so how many weeks did you do? Four weeks. Four weeks. Could I get on that revolve? Oh, <laughs> it was like. It was, it was as if Michael Flatley had a wooden leg. I just could <laughs> not get on that. And I always remember there was one night, I, I did it as smoothly as anything, got on that revolve. I was, <laughs> I was like, yeah, my life is made. And then I was that happy when we were going into the bows that <laughs> I literally skipped. And as I skipped, I went flat out on my face. And all the audience went, ooh. Mm. And then I got up. So out of character, went, don't worry, loves, I'm all right. I'm <laughs> <laughs> was it well publicised that you were going into Limes, or was it sort know. of kept under wraps? I, just, I don't know because I wasn't aware of that actually until was I you not? Did, no, I wasn't until I did some research and found out that maybe. you'd actually done a, a stint in the West oh, End before yeah, no, that. Maybe, oh, maybe so it wasn't. I wasn't aware of it. Maybe it wasn't. Um, I don't really. I, I don't think it was like major announced. I think it was like literally just doing the graph before we started right, right. the rehearsals. The rehearsals. But yeah, no, I'm so glad we did do it that way. What? So you start rehearsals for Oliver. Yeah. Um, obviously with a, a a director that you hadn't met throughout the whole process of. Rupert, yeah. yeah. Was that difficult? It was. <laughs> do you know what? The, the, I think the, the natural kind of thing I do is like you want everyone to feel at home and everything. Yeah. And, and I remember sitting down with, with Rupert Gould and uh, Bern Gorman, who was playing Bill Sykes. Lovely, lovely, lovely people. And he went, so how long have you known? How long have you known him to Bern? I said, oh, I met him about five minutes ago behind the bike shed. He offered me a cigarette. <laughs> Not that he meant, how long have you known Bill Sykes right, as the character? Right. like... Oh, I right. see. Right, okay, uh. now I get it. <laughs> Let's just rewind that. <laughs> yeah. um, but funny enough, I bumped into Rupert about, oh, it was a brilliant show, the director of the show Taste of Honey. Yeah. Bijan did, he wrote and directed The Arrival, which was at Shepherd's Bush, and I just bumped into Rupert there. So right. Two really so yeah, that was my first... Because that long have you process known? isn't normal for any audition, really, that you do for a West End show. No. You meet the casting director, you may have a recall, then you yeah. meet the director, then the director signs off, and then before you know it, you've already sort of got a relationship before yeah. you go into the rehearsal, yeah. room, where you were kind of meeting the director yeah. cold. It's like higher, you poor thing, you've got to put so, on now. So, obviously, they're, all, they're trying to train you up as Nancy through the television programme, yeah. and you get to rehearsals. Was it a case of, well... You know the characters, so or was it a case we're going to now start from scratch? It was kind of with Joe McCulloch was a brilliant dialect coach, so had all that previous to that whilst I was doing right. the RADA, and then that was kind of worked on. Pardon me, and then with Stephen Brooker with the music, um, it was all it was really worked on, and I'm glad of that way because I I, mm. I I literally that's all I ever wanted was to kind of give. I didn't want to be one of those like you know people that you vote for things and. Oh, I've got it now, and just yeah, go. So. It's going to happen. I hate that. Mm. I hate that. I just I wanted to to give the best I could give, and just just enjoy it. Really, you felt the pressure, though, right? Oh, God. the fact that you know. I, th did I feel yeah. the pressure? Because oh. I know some people would go, well, a million people have just voted for me, no. X amount of million, so I've got this. You don't know, get but, so cocky. But I suppose... It's this industry, isn't yeah. it? I don't think you should ever I think get... it's really refreshing to have that approach that you go, no, I still want to... No, I'm going to... Do you not think that it should always be like I, that? I though, think seriously. so, but I, I don't but necessarily... But some people don't. They don't, and it's oh, surprising. I'm not going to name any names. When we turn the mic off, you it, can listen to it at the end of the recording. <laughs> it surprises me, but um, I'm always, you know... Even now, even in, in Phantom, you're all hoping for, not criticism, but direction, change it, yeah. try new things, yeah. keep working, keep working, keep working. Do you not think that's the that's the brilliant thing about theatre? Obviously, in film, it captures a moment and you get two, yeah. three goes at it. Mm. But in theatre, it gives you, and it is a great kind of, it's a great training ground, theatre. Yeah, I think so. Because you're constantly changing. Yeah. And somebody can do 
can react in a, a certain mm. way to one scene and you go, oh, yeah. now, yeah. okay, this now, really changes yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's like a great game of tennis. Of course it is. I'm not, you know, I think filming is tough because there is a expectation to get it right mm-hmm. first time. But I think I think it's really refreshing to know on Monday you could go on and go, ah, I wasn't quite sure about that. Mm-hmm. And you go, well, I've got tomorrow to do it slightly yeah, differently yeah, 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 or improve yeah. by Wednesday, slightly yeah. different, or, or different... Um, hurdles that you've got to overcome that you yeah. didn't anticipate on Monday um, and I you know I always there's a I don't know if you know this story but I, I think it's Sanford Meisner uh, was watching a production that his daughter was in and uh, he came backstage and his daughter said oh wasn't I wonderful tonight that was really great and he said uh, you were okay and then he came to see it maybe two weeks later and she was on and he came backstage and she went ah oh, it's just it's awful tonight I just didn't feel it and he, he said my darling you were wonderful yeah. and she just couldn't quite work it out um, sometimes if you're doing all the work you know the audience get you know sometimes you've got to let the audience do a bit of the work it's, I, look I think theatre can be it is a collaborative event yeah and that includes the, the audience. audience. Absolutely, yeah. So sometimes, I mean, it's like with this, a taste of honey. Once they kind of get on a fly of a laughter, you mm. kind of, you go, ah, oh, but, and it takes it, the rhythm. It, and of course, when, when laughter lands, it's the rhythm of the, it mm. affects the rhythm of the show, and that can affect, mm. you know, everything. So it is, you're all yeah. in one room together. What but no, your, it's brilliant. What was your opening night like at Oliver? Oh, God, that was so... See, I'm, gosh, I can't even find words to describe how it was. It was just unreal. It was the most unreal experience that you probably wouldn't to give to Mother Teresa, but then you also wouldn't give it to your, you know, your your worst enemy. Mm. It was that weird mixture right. of I don't know what's going on, but let's just stick on it yeah. and hope we get off at the end. That was. So how long did you do as Nancy? Was 16 it, months. 16 months. Yeah. So was well, it Oliver, always 16 Oliver months? I'll have by the end of it, so it's time <laughs> to go. <laughs> so was it always 16 months, or was it, we'll just see? Um, I don't know what it was. I can't remember what it was. I think it was like, and then there was an option, but then Kerry Ellis came in as well, and right. then I went to do uh, Spam a lot, which was right. cool. Did you get, so it's really tough to get an agent, and I think a lot of, sort of people leaving drama school and that's sort of like the, the first goal yeah when you did the Nancy program did you ha- you still had an agent during that no. process you didn't no we didn't and funny enough there was I've, I've been with the same agent same agent as John Barrowman who was one of the yeah. judges and it was my mum and dad who was stood backstage and, and Gav uh, Gavin sorry Gav said just something that was just really lovely and that wasn't for my ears do you see what right. to me yeah. it wasn't and then I went afterwards, and basically the BBC rule of care is that the agents apply in, right. and then you go visit them afterwards. Right. And then... So there is a sort of uh, showcase type thing where they do write in if they want to represent yeah. you. Right. But I just, I just, yeah. I've, and you've been with Gavin, Gavin ever Bark, since, Gavin Barker. Yeah. Right. The Barker family, and it's just, it feels, feels you know, right. like a family, yeah. So I've just really... So when you finished Nancy, did you think... Oh, I'm going home now. Yeah, <laughs> that's, it. that's it. I'm Thanks, done. West End. Or Good night. Or did you go? Well, were people approaching you for yeah. for a lot of jobs? Yeah, which is look, which is which is cool, isn't a it? dream, it's isn't really it? Cool. If you can get to that. So point. I was doing that. I was doing uh, a tour with John Barrowman, which I'm I'm still recovering from, <laughs> and um, and so did that. And then was that like a John Barrowman live? Yeah, is yeah. Right. Um, and then we did that, and then did spam a lot. And then what came after Spam a lot? So did you have to audition for these jobs? Do you have to audition no. for Spam a lot? No. <laughs> it's, it's the thing have you had the... to audition since for stuff? No, of course, yeah, of course I have. have. Of course I have. Of course well, I have. Well, you never know. Oh, gosh. I'd love... Do you know but what? But Spam a lot was offered to you. Spam a lot was offered. Right. And that was that was brilliant. I had a really good time with that. Did the did the tour of it. And then recent... Well, quite recently, I'd just say recently, about three years ago, closed it when it was in the West End. At the Playhouse. At the Playhouse. So, yeah, I really enjoyed that. And you played the Lady of the Lake, right? No, I was sick. I had to <laughs> <laughs> I, I just had a... I was going to quickly look at my notes and go, uh-oh. Oh, uh, like, part. <laughs> it was gender-bending. Um, <laughs> no, I... Uh, yeah, Lady of the Lake, that was a great part. It was really weird. They took it over to Italy. Right. Which is gorgeous. A lovely little town called Trieste. 
um, lovely restaurant called La Tavernetta where it's that nice that you order mains for starters. And um, But what was weird, obviously it's kind of ladled in comedy, isn't it? It's mm. Monty Python, but it was all subtitled. Right. And I'm like, oh, this is really bad. So we'd, we'd land the gag, but um, shh. And they were like, oh, they're not laughing. Because they haven't Carry quite... on. And then when we oh. carry on, they go, oh, 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 oh. You're like, it was weird. That's brilliant. It was really disjointed. So what did you, what was the sort of aim after you finished Nancy and Spamalot? Did you... Just to keep work. I just to you keep just in did it. you just take what was offered to you because you've done a lot of television, loose women, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The national lottery. Yeah. Um, so was it just a case I'll just do what I'm offered? In or were it, you field in field in certain offers? Oh, it's like yeah, do you know what? I just just what I just wanted to work. Right. And it wasn't kind of, you know, I wanna be the biggest star I can be. I wanna be this, you know, this entity. I right. just I just wanted to enjoy doing what I did and I was I'm lucky enough to kind of go do the like the radio or go do you know like the presenting side of mm -hmm. it I, I've been looking in that in that way in that regard instead of just kind of nailing all my yeah, you know yeah, yeah. To, down to one mast and I just no I just enjoyed working what show haven't you done that you would love to do is there anything Oh, Gypsy. You'd like day. to do Gypsy. Oh, if Imelda wanted a day off, I would have been there. <laughs> Mind you, if Imelda wants a day off on Hello Dolly. Yeah, perfect. She shall be yeah. there. <laughs> so you did um, spam a lot. Yeah. Then you went into, obviously, the Nationals production of One Man, Two Governors. Yeah, one Man, Two at, at the West, In the West End, right? Yeah, they took they uh, they went off to Broadway and we took over at the Haymarket and that right. was brilliant. Yeah. It was and really And that was that there. the first sort of experience of doing uh, a straight play? I did Shakers I think it was like years ago at like Chorley Theatre my Joseph used to do supports for Ken Dodd so I think they just doubled me up the, uh, yeah I did Shakers which was a play um, but yeah my first technically what was that about Shakers it's about like the the girls night out thing right. it's the bouncers oh I see bouncers, bouncers and, and shakers. shakers yeah 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 so I, I'm sure I was at Charlie. it must have been Right. Oh, I forget where I've been. Though. And do you like doing straight theatre? Love it. I know this seems to be this. So if you're either a musical theatre performer, or, yeah. I, you should never I, be. I hate that oh, sort me of too. boxing you into this. That, me and the too. Other. Never get boxed in. No. Have you tried to sort of? Is that been something you've consciously tried to do? Is not get sort of typecast as a or the MT performer? I, I hate to say that. I hate to say this because you shouldn't be. But yes, I have. I've 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 made a conscious decision to maybe not do some things because I, I want to show that as we collectively are more than just this, mm. you know, we don't just sing and, and dance. We, you know, we, we yeah. can adapt to other areas because it is, no matter what, it is entertainment. Mm. And we're the most adaptable entities to get up and play any form of character. You're adapting to that kind of, yeah. that being. Mm. So to say that you can't go and do something, yeah. I think it's just silly, but it's and I, I I am sad that you can't say oh I can do that and I can do mm. this and that's the one thing I always get asked when you do a straight play is going what's the difference I said well it's just like a musical but with no with, with no, no songs yeah. with no music yeah. that's all it is yeah the the text is still there and the, mm. you still have to find the story but it's just kind of do music. you think you still face those type of um, hurdles of trying to convince people that yes you can play I, th I think in this industry I think I think there's always going to be hurdles right there's got to be but it's worth jumping up over them yeah um but yeah I, I think if there wasn't hurdles do you think that in a way that it wouldn't make you want to work if it was just everything became so well, easy but it's everything's really easy yeah you know, some, sometimes I go it just I, I and, you know, I go, oh, God, it's really tough. Why is it just me? But then I go, I would rather a journey that has got some struggles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, you've got there's no story to tell. It's and there's no of, appreciation. And that's you don't, you is. don't really appreciate no, how. You don't. Um, and you, that is a question that comes up a lot. Is oh, you know, it seems easy for you, or um, you know, or if you if you get a cover in in a in a show and you've only been there two years, and they go, oh, that that took somebody else. Eight years, and I go well. 
okay, but everybody's on their different journey. Yeah. It was still tough, just yeah. means I, I may have got it slightly sooner than somebody else. So you stayed, you've done a lot of straight theatre since yes. um, One Man, Two Governors or, or Shakers. Um, so, which leads us to sort of the show that you're in now, really. Oh, well, the... And, um, so, was this offered to you, or did you have to audition? No, I had to, no, no, no. I had to audition, and I was like, oh, and do you know what, I was like, I was going, I went to audition at the NT, and I was like, I just, I, I, that building makes me scared, because just greats have Yeah, I know. It. It's like the, you know, stages when you go, oh mm. my God, they've been on the stage. I love walking around the National, and I go that it's got to be one of my favourite places to just sit have a coffee. I don't know what it is, but I just it's feel got like an it, energy, there's just it? something about it. And people go, well, it just looks, you know, like a, a big brick palace. It was a very but expensive brick very palace. Big, but <laughs> I, just, first built. I just love it. Yeah, I just it's true. lap it up. But the worst thing is when you go in there, you always see people you know. And right. then I had to go, oh, funny enough, I bumped into the mate from one man. I was like, I you know what you're in for. I was like, I'm in for an audition. And I didn't tell any when I when I want some when I really want something. I don't tell people because right. I, I have that fear of going, I know what I'm like in auditions and I'm not going to get it. So if I don't tell anyone, I don't make an absolute right. knob of myself. Mm. What did you have to prepare for this audition? It was just apart from, just apart yeah, from, just the apart from Helen and stuff. Um, I didn't have to do, obviously the singing, singing in this, so I didn't have to sing. Right. Um, but there is singing in this. In this, yeah. Was I, that something that they added later or was that... In the concept originally, I think it was it was in the concept originally by Sheila Delaney. She right. always wanted a, a jazz trio in there. Right. Um, but then it was like music just really fed through right. all the way through in rehearsals, right. more so than I think than probably versions. was originally planned. Right. And so yeah, so I went and auditioned, and then funny enough, bumped into Gemma, who plays my daughter, mm -hmm. who previously I just presented an award to at the stage debut awards, and right. we got like a house on fire. I was like, bloody hell, what are you doing here? I was going in for audition. Oh my God, no, you're not, so am I. You know, like you do. Yeah. And um, went in and just, yeah, just blurted something out that right. was reasonably audible. And I got the job. Who was in the audition? Bijan, the director. Yeah. Alice, Alistair Kumar and I Isabella. And they were all like there. And they were just, they were, they are, not they were, they are warm people. Right. Which I, to anyone who's casting out there, I promise me I'm not telling you how to do it. But when you are so warm and welcoming, mm. when you go into any audition rooms, mm. I can't tell you how much you are felt, how much you are put at ease, I should mm. say. Mm. So that always helps. There seems to be, a, 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 not a huge difference, but a slight difference between a musical theatre audition and a, you know, a straight, audition, mm -hmm. whatever that means, but straight theatre audition, plays or um, Shakespeare. There seems to be a chat. Everybody says, oh yeah, we have a little chat. Sit down. What have you been up to? What did you think of the play? What did you think? You did know, think of the guy. Kind of... Well, not auditions I've been to. No, you, what you, did they do? you just go in and they go, hello, nice to see you. How are you? And what have you got for us? And I go, I, I'm going to sing music of the night or something. I don't know. And then they go, thank you. So, right. So, oh, so in musical theatre auditions, yeah, which I suppose is like the yeah, you just sing a song. Just sing a song. Mind you, if you act through a song, that's where you get well, I suppose the one, so. don't you? Really? But there's no. It does feel like a conveyor belt sometimes. Oh, okay. I, it probably gets more chatty the more recalls you do. Do you have you done self tapes and stuff? Do they do I've self done tapes? One, but I but. Yeah, I've only done one show, so I haven't really got a great deal of experience. <laughs> I just wanted to be in Phantom. That was my... Uh, oh, now you're screwed. Yeah, you're so in I, it. Don't, you're I know, I don't know what, what to do what next. Are gonna, what are you going to do next? I don't know, I have no idea. Love never dies. Love, I don't that, know. Uh, but <laughs> I just... Wait, there's, no, there's nothing else. No. It's, the, it's, the, it's the... That was the only... Phantom 2. Yeah, Phantom 2. I suppose it would be nice to do it, wouldn't it? Not coming, that's coming yeah, back Yeah, it is going on tour, yeah. Say. But that's all I wanted to do, weirdly. That's that was not all I wanted to do, but that was the show I went to see mm -hmm. and thought, My God, I have to give up my job and I want to be covering or uh, the Phantom. And then I, I can remember leaving the theatre feeling physically sick, getting on a train back to Virginia. Who, who was in the audition room when you went in there? Um, so, so it was all the creatives, Trevor Jackson. Love um, him. I love him. Yeah. Oh, I love him. Trevor's very quiet, so he, he didn't really he's... say a lot. But I can remember going in. 
I joined the show just as a swing, but then obviously auditioned for the Phantom cover. Yeah. And then there's a, you know, but then there's an added pressure that they know you. Yeah. But he, Trevor is such a wise, yeah. honest soul. Mm. Again, one of these people in the industry that you just, that, you, that you're that thankful that they're there. Mm. There are certain people, not all of them, and I have to say that, and this is throughout the industry, it's brilliant that they're there because they are the bolt mm. holes that yeah. kind of pull it all together. And, mm. and Trevor's definitely because you've done Lim, you've done Limis since, right? You yeah, did Madame they T. took it. Yeah, they Dubai. took it over to Dubai, right. which was just unreal. It was like mm. late. It was like is that a nice experience? I haven't done a show that you know. Uh, it was the new version, right? But but similar. It was the it was I think it's very similar. It yeah. the, the same version yeah. that's gone into town. But um, no, I really enjoyed it. I was I always call it. Do you know my my friend Bobby? Nana Jean, she goes, oh, I love, I love that Les Mis. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I always pop it into my head. So um, just to close, really, um, we always sort of ask maybe advice for people who are looking to pursue this career. Don't do uh, yeah. it! <laughs> <laughs> and um, really, you know, what advice would you have for people thinking that is this the right decision for them? Um you know, it's filled with trepidation and unemployment and all these things, yeah. these these statistics that they keep putting around all the time. And I think it does put you off. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But I yeah. think sometimes, you know, a, a life of oh wells are better than what ifs. I agree. I think, look, I think if you come up against things and it's that thing, it's that kind of hurdle if you want to jump that hurdle, you'll probably fall over the other side, but just get back up and there'll be another hurdle. Mm. And if you fall over, just keep getting back up. Mm. It's You'll cry, you'll laugh, your liver will probably never be the same. <laughs> but it's just, it's that kind of just being willing to get stuck in and mm. enjoy it. And, and always as well, like just always be willing to go and go down new avenues. Yeah. Like, you know, um, you know, I was I came into musical theatre, but going doing straight theatre and the radio and presenting, and we've just been uh, we've just got a, a writing project that's been optioned, which is fantastic. So, the just try everything, mm -hmm. go for everything, because you just never know what's going to come of it. And it's like you said, you can say as many are what if, mm -hmm. just 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 do what it. do's, yeah, what yeah. or oh, what do's, petal. <laughs> so what's next for you? Well, yeah, we've just, I can't, no, 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 but we've just had uh, myself and a friend wrote a TV series. Right. And we've just been optioned. Which Amazing. Which is kind of really surreal. You can't say any more than that. I can't Can you give us it. a bit of a hint of the plot? Well, it's about northern women, which I know nothing right. about. So, you know, coming from Hampshire, I really struggled <laughs> to, you know, tap into that. But, um, but yeah, so no, we're just are literally going to be uh, my head. Uh, I, I want one of your fancy laptops, but I use, I'm really quite sad I use my iPad and a keyboard. Oh, really? I have my head buried into that for the next couple of months, definitely. And you've got a week left of a, week a taste left, of honey. Yeah. And there's no option for that to go anywhere else. It's not because we did the yeah we did, the, did tour. the tour. We did the tour <clears> and then it transferred in. Um, and now it'll be really. I'll, I'll miss the character. Mm. You know, I'll miss I'll miss the company, but um, yeah, still got to finish sometime. Thank you.